Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is copper tube flaring and the tools used in order to connect refrigerant lines. Also check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. In this book we go over the different steps in order to prepare a system for refrigerant. So we go over each procedure step by step, and we also go over refrigerant charging and also troubleshooting. This book is available over at Amazon.com and also at ACServiceTech.com. So first things first, whether you're cutting off a flare or you're just cutting the copper tube, you want to get your tubing cutter snug on there. You're going to go around once and you're just going to kind of edge this wheel in clockwise just a little at a time until you're done. And it's going to allow this bleed on the tubing cutter to just cut right into the copper tube and you see that we're ready to just have this little piece fall out. So this tube right here was not reamed and this one was reamed. And this is what could potentially happen if you use a stick reamer or a unibit in order to ream the inside of the copper tube. So when I'm doing a flare, I typically always use just a round reamer because you don't want to scar up the face on the inside of the tube where the copper tube is going to seal. In order to use our round reamer, we want to make sure that we have the tube in the downwards position. And then you're going to just rotate this and it doesn't take much force in order to get this done. Then afterwards, you just tap that to make sure that you don't have any uh, copper shards on the inside of the tube for when you're getting ready to flare. Here's what the copper looks like when it's reamed, and here's what it looks like when it's not reamed. So you can see that the copper is sharp and protruding inwards. Here's our standard flaring tool and block. So we just open this up with the wing nut, and this is quarter inch OD copper. So we just slip it into the block. We want to make sure that we have about an eighth of an inch sticking out. So right about there, and then we tighten this down. You always want to make sure to also have your flare nut on there ready to go. So you don't want to forget that before you flare. And you just hand tighten these up. And you can use this part of the tool right here in order to finish tightening. And what you're going to do is you're going to sit this on here, but you can see that this part needs to get backed up a little bit. You're going to want to use a lubricant such as Nylog. This one is compatible with all refrigerants, so you're just going to have a little bit of either refrigerant oil or some type of other lubricant such as Nylog that's compatible with the, the system you're working on. And you want to have that so that this doesn't get scratched up and so it helps it glide and the flare doesn't get scratched up so you have a nice smooth flare when you're done. So once you have the oil on the cone, you don't want a whole lot of oil because you don't want to get it inside the tube. You're going to slip this tool right on there, and you see that you could slide this down. But we're going to get this lined up on the copper tube, and we just tighten this. So just like this, and... I'm going to try not to block your vision so you can see. And that's it. So you don't want to force it. It's Once you get down nice and tight, that's it. And then you just back this up. And this tool will fall right off. So here's our flare. The other thing is you always want to make sure that you're having the copper tube and the cone facing in on the, the beveled side. So you can see that if you were flaring 7 sixteenths right here, you would have wanted to have the copper sticking out of this side. But now we can go ahead and release. And there's our flare. So here's our flare, and you can see that there's no scratches in it. But this is going to be different than an eccentric flaring tool because this cone right here isn't going to be touching all of the copper all at the same time. On our eccentric flaring tool, you see that this cone is only going to press on one part of the copper at a time. So there's less friction, it's easier to turn, and there's less of a chance of scarring up the copper tubing. So it makes a really nice flare. So here's our eccentric flaring tool, and you want to make sure, once again, to have your nut on ahead of time. And all you need to do is you just slip this right into the quarter inch, and you're going to do the same thing as you did before. You want to make sure that you're sticking out about an eighth of an inch. And on this one right here, you see that there's these little nubs here, and you just line this up, and you just tighten this one clamp. And that's what's going to hold the copper tubing inside the flare block. So now that we're in there, you can see that the cone right there is getting ready to go into the copper tube. So 
So it really doesn't take much force in order to do this. And what's happening right here is you see that this is opening up and it's not going to allow us to over tighten it. So you see that this little rod right there is not allowing us to overturn it. So now we just back it up. We loosen our clamp. And there's our flare. Here's our flare up close from the eccentric flaring tool. There are no scratches in it, and you can see that the flare fits right inside the nut, but it does take up the full surface area, so it's going to have the largest amount of surface area on the joint, so that's good for sealing up the high-pressure refrigerant. Here we have our process flaring tool, so this is the deluxe model, and you want to make sure that you have your flare nut on, but on the back of this, you can select which copper tube that you're going to flare. So you can see this way is 5 eighths, and so you want to have this up, and we're just going to turn this wheel. So we're working with quarter inch right now. So we're also going to turn this. So there's quarter inch. And now these wheels line up. This tool goes up to three quarter copper. So that's OD, soft copper, which is also referred to as ACR copper. So once you have that selected, you can open this up and stick your copper in. I also want to show you what it looks like in the back here. So once you set your copper in, you're going to have this little stopper. So this little lever right here is what's going to stop the copper tubing from going in too far. So if we slip this in, you see it's stopping right there, and that's how far it's going to set the copper for flaring. So it's going to automatically show you that instead of you having to maybe guess it on a standard block. So then we just go ahead and tighten this down. You don't have to tighten this too, too hard. It's pretty strong and, and tight for that. And now you have this head. Once again, you got to have uh, some refrigerant wheel or nylog on the, on the cone right there. And we're just going to turn this in. It's kind of dark. You might not be able to see it, but I'm going to show you what it looks like in a second. So there is no stop on this. You're just going to go ahead and turn it. Until, it, until you get tight, and that's it, and you're going to back it out. Then you just loosen this wing nut. And you can see on the back, the flare comes right out. So here's your flare from the Deluxe Process Flaring Tool, and that flare looks pretty good, and it's taking up most of the surface area inside the nut, so that's a good flare. The next tool we're going to use is the spin flares. So this one's half inch, three eighths, and quarter inch. And we have these linked down in the description section below. But you're going to notice that when I put this into the drill and, and drill this into this copper tube, that you're not going to have a finished flare once I'm done that. So what you're really doing is you're heating this up and preparing this to be flared. So you want to have a little bit of nylog or refrigerant wheel on this flare, flare face right here. And you're going to tighten this on while this tube is still hot. So it's going to form the flare between the, the nut and, and this right here. Now before I use this in order to enlarge and heat up the copper to make the flare, I do ream the copper tube. Now I know a lot of people don't do that, but I do. And the reason for that is if you use this tool, it's a multi-step process in order to flare the copper tube. And I don't want to be in a hurry trying to knock all the copper dust out after I heat this tube up. So as soon as this tube is heated up, I want to get it onto this flare and tighten it down in order to make my final flare. So it's not as simple as just drilling this into the copper tube in order to make a finished flare. So you're supposed to put this on while it's still hot and you want to make sure that you have some refrigerant wheel or nylog on here ahead of time. So I simply just ream this such as this right here and then I tap the tube downwards to get the copper dust out and then I'm ready to go. Then we want to put our nylog or our refrigerant wheel right on the flare face. And you want to make sure that you don't put a whole lot on, just enough to help seal that joint and also to help the copper glide along the face in order to make its flare. This joint is very hot right here, so you want to make sure that you don't touch that. I'm going to use two small adjustable wrenches just to 
make my flare, and then afterwards I'm going to use a torque wrench in order to tighten this down. This torque wrench is set at 11 foot-pounds, and we'll hear a click when it's done. That's it. That's how you complete a flare with the spin flares, but let me take this apart so you can now see the finished product on the inside. So this looks different now. So there's your finished flare, and it does take up most of the surface area of the inside of the nut. So that's how the spin flare finishes a flare. Anytime you're tightening down a refrigerant flare, make sure that you're using the foot-pound torque value that the manufacturer has listed for their flares. As well, you might have just a metric flare uh, for your torque value as well, and it's fairly easy to change it. You just pull this down, and then you can change your, your value up here. So here's the finished flare from the spin flare set, and it does take up the majority of the inside of the flare nut. Remember that all these tools are linked down in the description section below if you're looking for them, and let me know what you think about these tools or if you prefer a different flaring tool. If you want to learn about working with refrigerants, check out our paperback and ebook available over at acsurfacetech.com. We also have the paperback available over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.